There's 70 days until the 2024 NFL Draft. 203 days until the 2024 NFL season kicks off and 360 days until Super Bowl 59. And I'm telling you now, nearly a year in advance, the Lions are going to win Super Bowl 59. First, let's talk about the defense. Last season, in regards to 2022, when the Lions went 9-8, and eight, the defense was definitely the worst part of the team. Gave up a lot of points. Lions lost a lot of shootout games because of it. So we signed three DBs during last year's offseason, and two of them get hurt, Gardner Johnson and Mosley, pretty much both out for the entire season. Sutton is our only new addition from free agency, and the Lions secondary is pretty much the same. A little bit better, though, because we draft Brian Branch. And Brian Branch is an absolute dog. has a phenomenal rookie season. He hits with no regard for his own life, but he just lays people out. And then we kind of saw the emergence of Ifatu Melifanwu in the second half of the season. Had the division clinching interception against Minnesota. Had some great sacks. And Aaron Glenn started cooking up some great defensive packages for Brian Branch, for Melifanwu, and those blitzes were really effective in the playoffs and regular season. But the Lions went 12 and five, won two playoff games, almost made it to the Super Bowl. Should have been 13 and four during the regular season, but whatever. They did all that with a pretty bad secondary. I mean, you had Jerry Jacobs out there, you had Will Harris out there, Charles Harris, and then Vildor. I mean, I like those guys, but I'm sorry, they're not elite defensive backs. And Sutton had an all right year. Uh, Kind of struggled towards the end of the season in the playoffs, but I think just the workload for him was too high. I'm not a Sutton hater. I really dislike all of the hate towards Sutton. I mean, what do you want him to do? He's just out there in man coverage against some of the best wide receivers in the game has and has no help whatsoever from the other defensive backs. My point is that the Lions were so good, even with a struggling secondary, in that during this offseason, whether it's free agency or the draft, they're going to make additions, whether it's a cornerback, safety most likely a cornerback and when we do that then how do you stop the lines you can't stop our offense and if our defense is playing lockdown it's over the linebackers also played pretty great uh jack campbell was pretty good would love to see more of him alex anzalone is a dog great defensive captain our defensive line could definitely use an addition and we also hope to see that during free agency in the draft but if you get somebody just anybody paired up with aiden hutchinson Aiden Hutchinson going into his third year. It's going to be even better. Oh my gosh. And that was part of the problem from this season. Sometimes the quarterback would just have way too long. Pressure was just not getting to him. And our secondary cannot guard wide receivers for 10 seconds. A lot of fans are mad that Brad Holmes didn't go out and get defensive line talent before the playoffs. Uh, mainly just Chase Young. People that were mad about that, uh, I understand wanting to get somebody but I'm all right with the decision. It said there was locker room issues and Lions were fine without him. They have Chase Young. Maybe they're a little bit better, but we, we could have handled the 49ers easily without Chase Young. I was also watching Chase Young film today against the Lions because people were saying he was just giving up against the Lions. He had no work ethic. And I was like, dang, that's why the Lions didn't pick him. He had locker room issues. And I watched the film. I don't know. There's like one play where he kind of gives up on it, but he's not really close to it. And I didn't think he had a huge impact in the game, but he's also going up against Panay Sewell. So I don't know. I think it goes both ways. I was watching that though. This popped up. I thought it was pretty funny that this was his post game outfit after the Super Bowl loss. To me, this just looks like he packed this. was like, damn, I'm going to look so cool in my post game after we win the Super Bowl. <laughs> and now he, that's what he has to wear. But he's also a millionaire and is in the NFL, so who am I to really make fun of what he dressed? He can wear anything. The Lions are going to add talent, though. Defensive backs and edge rushers to pair up with Aiden Hutchinson. Brad Holmes is a killer drafter. I have full faith in him. Look at him last year. Look at him the last three years. He's also not scared to make moves during free agency, trade players away, trade four players. Another cornerback paired up with Brian Branch and then Cameron Sutton and Kirby Joseph and Garner Johnson at safety. That seems pretty solid to me. I think the Lions should re-sign Garner Johnson. A lot of people uh, don't agree with me. It's also a very controversial just take and opinion to have. 
watch my free agency video if you disagree with me or agree with me because i think it's a pretty interesting topic moving on to special teams before we look at the offense jalen reeves maven is going to be re-signed great special teams captain and then our punter jack fox is an absolute stud and michael badgley um he's pretty good uh a lot of people are up and down on him i think the lions are going to draft a kicker or sign one during free agency but i'd prefer to draft one and hopefully we draft a solid kicker that would be game changing for the lions but our special teams is already pretty good with jack fox being our punter and michael badgley isn't the worst kicker in the nfl i mean he made a 54 yarder in the wild card round against the rams it's pretty good i think just the biggest concern is that he's not super consistent from long and i've heard that he can't kick outdoors maybe that's it uh, i'm not too sure on michael badgley but i think i don't think he's He's definitely not terrible. Moving to the Lions offense. Unstoppable. The Lions offensive line is one of the best in the league. It wouldn't hurt to get a little bit more depth there, but it's still top tier. Jared Goff under center has been phenomenal. This is his last year in his contract. The Lions will most likely resign him. If you don't want Jared Goff to be resigned, I think you're crazy. He just led this team to the NFC championship and they would have won it if it wasn't for mistakes not made by him. Jared Goff was phenomenal in the postseason. Jared Goff is one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL right now, and he's still extremely underrated. I think 49ers fans feel what they feel about Brock Purdy the same way Lions fans feel about Jared Goff, in that like they're underrated, and the rest of the league won't rank those quarterbacks high and say they're game manager type quarterbacks and not put respect on their name, but it doesn't matter because Jared Goff is going to keep winning and then win next year's Super Bowl. Like. Look at this, 2024 off-season QB power rankings by the 33rd team, ranked by Derek Klassen. This is where Amon Ross St. Brown has his podcast. Goff 14th? Are you serious? And Purdy's 18th? Way too low. Richardson's 16th, but he played five games this season. Kirk Cousins, Geno Smith, Kyler Murray, Jordan Love, none of them should be above Goff. Even Joe Burrow, Lawrence, both had terrible seasons. I know Burrow was injured, but Lawrence threw. Prescott should not be above Goff. Are you serious? Like, I wouldn't even put Lamar Jackson above Jared Goff. I think Josh Allen is fine up there. Justin Herbert, what has Justin Herbert done since he's been in the NFL? I'd love to see Justin Herbert win a playoff game. You can complain about the coaching, the defense, and with Lamar Jackson, who throws that ball up into triple coverage? I did not see Goff make a play that bad uh, all playoffs. He had the one dropped interception against Tampa, but he didn't throw it up into triple coverage with the game on the line. Then with the Lions wide receivers, Amonara St. Brown, one of the best wide receivers in the league, does not drop a pass. Sometimes he does, it happens to everybody, but one of the most, probably the most consistent catcher in the league right now, Jamison Williams, uh, on the opposite end, not the most consistent catcher in the league right now, dropped a touchdown against the 49ers, a uh, little bit of miscommunication. Last year was his rookie season and he did have limited play and he was suspended. I think Jamison Williams is going to have a phenomenal season next year, uh, work more into that wide receiver two role. He ha has had his struggles, but there's no doubt he is extremely talented with his speed and his playmaking ability, mainly his speed. People say he's a track star and cleats. No, bro. Like we saw the play against the 49ers. He can make great catches. Uh, we saw a touchdown catch against the 49ers. We saw the phenomenal catch against the rant or i think it was the 49ers as well where he kind of bobbled it and still made a great catch i think next year he's going to take his game up to the next level and really put this league on blast and then josh reynolds currently a free agent it'll be interesting to see if the lions resign him i think they will with this chemistry with golf and he's a phenomenal player if you think the lions shouldn't resign golf go watch my other free agents video about the lions uh it's kind of similar though where the like last year the lions had dj chark and then we didn't resign him but we still had Reynolds. I think the Lions would definitely keep Reynolds and it will be St. Brown, Williams, and Reynolds will be our top three wide receivers uh, with Raymond. He'll be back from injury next year. He'll maybe be that fourth or fifth string and we'll have Donovan Peoples-Jones as well. I don't think Raymond and Peoples-Jones will see the field very much. Just maybe a few plays, maybe like one or two catches a game, if that. Offensively, the Lions have Sam Laporta, the best rookie tight end from last season and one of the best rookie tight ends of all time set multiple records a phenomenal pass catcher hard to take down 
Great route runner, great blocker. Laporte is a dog. Cannot wait to watch this man evolve into one of the best tight ends in the league. I mean, he already is one of the best tight ends in the league. Absolute stud. And then my favorite part about the Lions offense, I love Jamison Williams. I love Sam Brown. I love the whole team. Uh, Sam Brown and Williams are one of my favorites on the team. And then my absolute favorite, Jameer Gibbs from the running back room. We saw Jameer Gibbs break ankles all season long and then put it put people on skates in the playoffs jameer gibbs i don't know i don't know how people are going to stop the lions offense next season i jameer gibbs is a stud best rookie running back from last year's draft uh, i cannot wait to watch him and then paired it with montgomery an absolute brute force north and south runner um montgomery's also a beast just can take players down uh also has that speed we saw that against the chargers i really did not know david montgomery could run that fast so some people complained about them splitting the backfield very small number of people i've seen complain about that i love them i love them split in time i think jameer gibbs will definitely get more of the workload uh because he's just more talented in my opinion but it's very good to have two solid running backs you can swap swap them in and out and they're both full energy ready to go they have rest between them you know i think it's kind of been one player gets one drive, the next player gets the other drive, and they kind of just go back and forth. I think that's really solid, you know. Get them in, keep them in for a bit, and then after the drive, you take them out. Love that. This Lions team is scary, and they're going to win next year's Super Bowl. Uh, I think it's going to be a little bit harder to win their division. I think they could possibly have a better record next season than this year. I think it might be harder, but I think they're also going to be a lot better. And you have all these players heading into year two, year three. And they're not even in their prime yet. Jameer Gibbs, year two. Jameson Williams, pretty much year two. Uh, maybe two and a half. Like Kirby Joseph going into year three. Brian Branch going into year two. Sam Laporta headed into year two. Panay Sewell, still a stud. And with free agency signings, we get a better kicker or we put more faith in Badgley and he's really good. Our punter's already fantastic. I the Lions can add more depth on the offensive line, maybe another tight end. Uh, I'm really excited. And the Lions also have Hendon Hooker behind golf. We have seen this year how important it is to have a solid backup quarterback because of how many injuries there were this season that the quarterback got injured and it was over or the quarterback got injured and the backup quarterback like Minshew for the Colts was able to keep that team alive. Dan Campbell and Brad Holmes were actually trying to get a new quarterback rule into the NFL last offseason after seeing what happened with the 49ers in the playoffs where Brock Purdy, the backup at the time, got hurt and then the backup got hurt to Brock Purdy and then Christian McCaffrey had to take snaps under center. And I think the Lions didn't really, didn't really predict that, but they saw how important it can be to have a strong backup quarterback so they draft Hennon Hooker and they signed Teddy Bridgewater in this season luckily golf didn't get hurt but we saw other teams struggle with their quarterback getting injured uh so Lions Brad Holmes Dan Campbell kind of saw it coming and I wouldn't be surprised if they take another quarterback because right now it's just Hennon Hooker Bridgewater is retiring and Nate Sudfeld Sudfield I'm not sure how to pronounce his name but He's terrible. I'm sorry, but he's not very good. And I wouldn't be surprised if the Lions take a quarterback maybe in the late rounds of the draft just to have that third string because right now it's just Hennon Hooker. And I think Hennon Hooker could be a phenomenal quarterback. I mean, coming off an injury, it kind of sucks. Hopefully he does rehab very well and doesn't tear his other ACL like Mosley. After Mosley did that, I researched and I found out that it's very likely or very common that when you tear your ACL, you come back from injury and you tear your other ACL. Uh, happened to obj i think it's common knowledge but i didn't know about it but hen and hooker at tennessee was phenomenal absolute stud just throwing the deep ball and that's why i think if if you ever get to see hen and hooker and jmo play together i think it's just game over i think that'd be really exciting maybe one day it will happen people complain about hen and hooker that the lions wasted a pick on him or that he's old uh he also has a great personality a great mental Watching his interviews with the team, he's just, I'm there. I'm there to make things happen, help out the team in any way I can. Uh, seems like a really good guy. I'm really excited for next season. This team is going to win the Super Bowl. I think there's going to be too good. And it's also really interesting to see, you know, 
people made fun of Dan Campbell in his opening interview. We're going to bite a kneecap on our way up. And then now look at this team's mentality. Like it's like a brotherhood. The culture is phenomenal. And the Lions aren't going to take a player that's going to disrupt the culture. And people might be upset about that. But that's going to be the difference when it comes to these games. Like the Lions, they're going to go out there and they're going to be hungry. And they're going to hit hard. And they're going to play hard. And that's why the Lions played their players in Week 18. Because they still had something to fight for. You look at Philly. Midway through the season, their team just implodes. And then Jalen Carter's making death threats to one of the 49ers uh, linemen and posting his family. Like, I don't know. All these teams have drama. And the Lions, you, you see them lose. And then all the players, they, they support Dan Campbell. Anzalone writes a nice message. They stick up for one another. The only thing that could be questionable is Cameron Sutton just answering the DMs. I think that's kind of funny. And Kirby Joseph was like retweeting shit as well. Uh, I just think that's funny though. I don't think that's really anything like bad. Like nothing really crazy happened from that. But this team, like they love each other and they stick up for one another and they all support Dan Campbell and they play hard for him. And you're not going to see Sam Laporta go up to Dan Campbell and just scream in his face and shoulder him in the Super Bowl. Uh, I think it was a little over dramatic. People saying like, look at this tight end assaulting his coach. Like, come on chill out it's not salt but like it was pretty like come on what are you doing it's embarrassing it's your coach so i'll stop rambling i think the Lions are gonna win the super bowl uh lock it in make your futures bets let me know what you think in the comment section below what teams should the lions be scared of uh what teams are we going to be competing with who do you think the lions are going to play in the super bowl and if you enjoy my content i'd really appreciate if you could like and subscribe it really helps me out a lot once again as always thanks for watching